George Lakoff, the linguist, philosopher, metaphorologist, would have us ask basic questions as to the nature of metaphor and how do the metaphors that are embedded in a culture's presuppositions shape the physical productions and outcomes of that culture. What, what sorts of physicality, what sorts of hard reality emerges from the background metaphorical conceptualizations that direct that culture's thought processes. Therefore, I will present you with a physical object that is a product of Japanese culture that, and here I am mind reading and I am definitely imposing some content, but it appears to me that the way the Japanese culture thinks about basic aspects of reality and languages, basic aspects of reality, may give rise to a very different or distinct set of solutions as compared to how a Western model might give rise to different sorts of solutions. So in our examination here, I would say consider uh, a Western model for heat and a Western model for cooking and the relationship between heat and cooking might also be part and parcel of a Western model for the relationship, say, of self and society or self and culture. I would propose that the Western model might be more that heat or energy is something external that is directed at either something as simple as food or as complex as a culture that brings about a transformation into a finished or edible or digestible or internalizable uh, either substance or idea where the Japanese model might be something that heat is something that comes from within and changes and makes ingestible or makes digestible or internalizable aspects of the culture. So we have an idea that something is imposed from without, an energy is imposed from without, which brings about the necessary transformation, as compared with, say, a model where heat is stored within and has an internally transforming power over the contents. Okay, I promised you I would show you a physical manifestation, a real-world engineered physical example. This is part of that question of what is this an example of? Or in Steve Andreas' is thinking also in his uh, scope and category thinking, what is this part of? So my example here is, um, is a cooking tool or a cook cooking implement made by the Zojirushi Corporation. I don't know how much of this I can show you. What this is, is essentially uh, a cooking vessel which looks like this. It's a stainless steel pot that goes inside of this, which is a large vacuum container, kind of like a large thermos. This is a, a double-walled stainless steel um, vessel, which is maybe, I don't know, half to three-quarter of an inch of a vacuum which is contained in a stainless steel shell. How does this differ? I, I'm sure that there, is, there are other cultures that have used these, these, these cooking containers, but why would something like this be so understandable and sensible to a Japanese and have very, very little listening or very, very little understanding in, say, a Western American consumer type model? So. Uh, if you went into a store there, a Japanese store, you might see this thing and it would make immediate sense to you. And if an American saw it, it might not make any sense at all. The way this thing works is this. It is a very, very powerful insulator. It's an extremely good insulator. So it, it holds the heat for a long period of time, say overnight. So in a Japanese model of the world, the heat is something you cook with. The heat of the already heated stuff, its own heat, is a property of that substance that is conserved and used as 
the cooking heat versus something that comes in from the outside. Microwaving, you might say, is, is the most Western kind of idea where we use the metaphor of nuking the food, right? You want it done instantly. So this also presupposes, the Japanese device presupposes a very, very different relationship of time, heat, a slow, long process of using its internal energy or its internal properties to slowly transform this into a, a delicious, nourishing food. So what you do with this thing is you heat the food in the pot on the stove to the desired temperature and you cook it for a while, but not very long. Then you insert it in the pot, you close the lid, and you just set it aside for, I don't know, you know, 12 hours, 8, 8, 12, 15 hours, however long you want to do it. And no further external heat is applied. The, the cooking energy is the heat of the food itself, which is contained within it and transforms the food over a period of 8, 12 hours, which is so foreign to American thinking. Yet it's absolutely brilliant because no further application of external heat is involved. There's no risk of overcooking. The nutrients are kept in much better shape because the heat is lower. So you're cooking with a lower heat, uh, substantially lower heat, but a very soft general heat for a much longer period of time. The nutrients are conserved, the flavor is conserved, there's no harm of burning, there's no risk of fire, you don't have to leave any hot thing on in the kitchen, so it's very, very safe. You simply put the food in and you set it aside and you leave it alone and you let it transform itself through its own inner nature, transforms it through sort of an organic process versus zapping it putting different heats on different surfaces, etc., using a, a higher heat model. So this is a, a really fascinating way that a culture and a culture's models of transformation actually have created, via Zojirushi, a physical, physical device or a physical object which manifests the, the deeper level metaphors and philosophies and thought processes of that culture, which do not seem to be, it's, which is very obvious to them, which does not seem to be so obvious or organically normal for us. Um, so there is, right in that moment, is a powerful distinction in how different cultures and their metaphors shape the outputs of that culture.